So I hope my my screen is visible and talking about metabolic yes, surgery for people with diabetes. Um, again, whether you know we we keep on trying to look at a solution and we create more problems by trying to do the solution. The agenda is this: I'm going to talk about the problem of obesity, about obesity in diabetes, with the metabolic surgery in diabetes, and the conclude. I would conclude then. It's important to realize that. Uh, 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 the the glucose homeostasis is very well controlled, and right from thirty years, we know about the chicken and egg story about insulin resistance and beta cell failure. Now we have progressed a lot, and now we know that there are more than eight and maybe twelve pathophysiological defects, and a lot of these defects are uh, governed by certain hormones and which are made by certain glands. And and they tightly control glucose homeostasis. And today there's a raging debate across the globe that whether uh, weight loss is is important or just the sugar control is important. Uh, not only people with diabetes, but many other people with pre-diabetes as well. And th- there are a lot of abnormalities in our p- people with obesity and overweight metabolic ab- abnormalities that drives diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even kidney disease. And so many other problems as such. So uh, uh, again, if you look at data relating to obesity studies in people with diabetes, uh, people with diabetes do not lose uh, the amount of weight with people without diabetes. Lose. So whether you go to the uh, the scale group of studies or uh, even even to the step group of studies with liraglutide and the step with semaglutide. The 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 reduction that one gets with uh, in people without diabetes, we don't get with people with diabetes. So you you get close to seven to eight percent with liraglutide and somewhere between ten to eleven percent with semaglutide. But uh, as compared to people without diabetes, you have much much better reduction. So probably there's some com- compensatory mechanism which acts. And here uh, we we are evolving into multi. A disciplinary approach of people with diabetes, where weight is the paramount importance, and we all know that uh, uh, you know people with higher BMI develop diabetes. Life expectancy uh, goes down just with increase in BMI. If you can look at it, that when you are at a BMI of forty, you are you have a fifty percent chance of reaching an age of seventy. That should trigger a lot of people. Apart from that. We all know that we have a lot of these disorders which are triggered by obesity, with NAFLD being one of the most common one and being the kingpin in this metabolic blunder, followed by GRD, sleep apnea, hypertension, knee problems. So a lot of things are triggered with obesity, and uh, India is is a country of the underfed and the overfed. People die because of malnutrition and obesity-related disorders. But what we see is that in among adults between 20 to 69 years of age, obesity is going to increase threefold, and that's an alarming worry in a condition in in a country which is still fighting for its basic needs. So, diabetes in India, as you can see, 67 percent of people with type 2 diabetes have overweight, and the odds ratio is that obesity is moderately associated with type 2 diabetes. Obesity contributed to almost 36 percent of overall diabetes disability adjusted life years in India. So, what is so 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 different in people with diabetes in India? Again, NAFLD is more common. We have the lean NAFLD. We have high triglyceride, high CRP, high waist hip ratio. We have premature amount of diabetes, high hypertension, coronary artery disease, and multiple other cardiovascular disorders, which are mainly Triggered by obesity, which seems to be the mother of all these NCDs. Now, if you look at look ahead, also the impact of of percentage weight loss on HbA1c. Yes, weight loss does cause a reduction in blood sugar as well as HbA1c. Now, let's look at certain surgeries and indications. These are the various societies which govern this metabolic space of obesity and diabetes and endocrine. And if you look at the indications for bariatric surgery, uh, it's, it's indicated in people with more than 35 with comorbidity of a BMI of more than 40. Eligible patients have a poor quality of life due to their obesity and its treatment complications. Typically, only considered only after other methods have proven to be ineffective. If you look at the 
IFSO and the ESO guidelines on metabolic and bariatric surgery. This is almost seven to eight years back. It says that a laparoscopic technique should be considered as a preferable option in operation in bariatric surgery. A decision to offer surgery should follow a comprehensive interdisciplinary assessment, psychological assessments of behavioral, nutritional, familial, and personality factors should be an integral part. After bariatric, all procedures require lifelong qualified surveillance. And upon failure to lose weight or to maintain weight loss following bariatric surgery, if medically indicated and a patient is willing, further bariatric surgery should be indicated. What does the ADA and the ESD consensus say? Oh, very similar is that more than 40, obviously, go ahead. 35 to 39, if you're not able to achieve weight loss and improvement in comorbidities, including blood sugar with non-surgical methods, go ahead. 30 to 34.9 BMI, again, similar. ADA, ESD consensus is also very, very similar. If you look at IDF the task force recommendation, it says that you could put patients on anti-obesity drugs for more than 27 BMI. Bariatric surgery for Asian population should be, uh, the cutoff should be 32.5 and not 35. And again, people win the Asian population with diabetes and other comorbidities, you could consider from 27.5 to 32.5 as well. If you look at indications for bariatric surgery and the comparison of guidelines for saving time, I will look at all of them together. So very, very similar, except that between 30 to 35 BMI, it's only the stages which is uh, looking at, at uh, South, this is the South Asian guide, gastroendoscopic uh, group, which looks at uh, doing a bariatric surgery. So that is a little bit gray area, but I would say that any BMI with 30 to 35 with uh, comorbidity like diabetes or sleep apnea or, or documented NAFLD should undergo the knife for bariatric surgery. Uh, this is the uh, metabolic surgery group from India which came up with these guidelines on two th in 2016. Uh, these are the various uh, procedures. LAGB basically is a laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, laparoscopic RUNY, BPD with duodenal switch, which actually saves or, or, or leaves the pylorus, and the laparoscopic mini gastric bypass. Now, indications uh, are, uh, again, frank indications are 37.5 without any issues, 32.5 with comorbidities. Again, here, uh, some of the insurance have taken it up, so you actually don't need much of an indication because patients are paying through the pockets, but patients should have uh, be motivated to lose weight, not considered in the age groups, uh, sorry, below 18 and above 65, above 65 only in the presence of severe obesity uh, and uh, obesity related comorbidities can be considered below 18 upon after a pediatric endocrinologist certification only and after attainment of puberty or completion of the skeletal maturity. So again, contraindications according to OC is drug or alcohol abuse, pregnancy after bariatric surgery. Importantly, pregnancy has to be planned at least 15 to 18 months after bariatric surgery. And ART can be initiated only 12 months after bariatric surgery. I have four to five uh, women in that childbearing age group whose indications for bariatric surgery was diabetes and PCOS and because they wanted to plan a family. And this is a very important thing that 15 to 18 months after bariatric, consider pregnancy and artificial reproductive therapy only after start treatment, only after 12 months of bariatric surgery. Types of surgeries we have, we have the adjustable gastric band, which is an inflatable band is used to create as you can see, a small pouch outside which limits food consumption. Weight loss is around 15%. Uh, it's, it's very small and today uh, not much of gastric banding is occur occurring. You have the RUNY and vertical sleeve gastrectomy, which is majority of the procedures today. Biliopancreatic division where you, you, you retain the pyloric valve is not done by many surgeons, slightly more specialized. 
So Ru and Y is where the majority the uh, surgeons uh, venture upon, creates a small, smaller stomach and bypasses the part of the intestine and hence you have an increase in GLP and that's where you have a good amount of, of weight loss. Vertical sleeve gastrectomy, as you can see, it leaves just a sleeve of the stomach, a sleeve pouch and results in reduced ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, 20 to 25%. Under a lot of sleeve gastrectomy and uh, is occurring. BPD, uh, not much occurring and very similar, but a variant called the duodenal switch retains the pyloric valve, which occurs. Benefits of bariatric surgery, this ADA also, uh, th there was a publication which looked at, at, at uh, long-term remission of diabetes after bariatric surgery up to almost 15 to 20 years. And there's a uh, higher rate of, of remission with the gastric banding, but it's not so popular in India. So if you look at the data and the kind of uh, remission after bariatric surgery, the major studies on long-term outcomes, if you can, if you very closely look at it, the remission is highest in the Rue and Y or the biliopancreatic diversion as compared to the other. And uh, if you look at uh, uh, LAGP, it's, it's weight loss at the at, at 10 years, you have almost 39.5%, which is fairly, fairly good. Again, challenges with existing intervention is that uh, the effectiveness is poor and that is why bariatric surgery or metabolic surgery comes especially in people with comorbidities like diabetes and you can see that pharmacotherapy can reach only 3 to 15 percent. Maybe the twin cretins may go up to 22 to 23 percent and come very close to a gastric sleeve and not closer to a ruin by bypass but you can see that that gastric band, gastric sleeve, and gastric bypass can give anywhere between 20 to 30, 35% weight loss. And we all know that almost 10 to 15% weight loss in people with diabetes is enough to cause remission. Risk associated with these surgeries, operative list around 10, 10%, which is uh, bleeding, pneumonia, stenosis, ulcers, peritonitis, death can also occur, but less than 1%. Uh, long term is obviously the nutritional deficiencies, protein deficiencies, gallstones and weight regain. Complications, we all know that there is dumping syndrome and recently uh, a formulation of glucagon to treat dumping syndrome and the hypoglycemia associated with dumping syndrome has been approved. You have the hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia, which is also seen in bariatric surgery. Uh, again, a lot of uh, nutritional issues, especially related to fat malabsorption and nutrient deficiencies. Polylithiasis is a sudden change in, in, in flux of, of, of nutrients will cause polylithiasis. So those are the complications of bariatric surgery. If you look at uh, the comparison between the four types of intervention which is available, you will see that... Uh, the, the uh, gastric bypass is the one which, which is fairly one which is used and sleeve gastrectomy being followed by the gastric bypass. There is in, uh, complication rates, especially to uh, earlier on related to vomiting and dumping and on all the others. But death on table is very, very low and the hospital stay for all these is very, very low. So if you, uh, if I could conclude saying that bariatric surgery results in complete and durable remission in carefully selected people. Uh, best outcome should be for people who are insulin independent. They have adequate uh, C-peptide, shorter duration of diabetes. Surgery as compared to standard of care is a very safe and cost-effective treatment modality. Thank you, Mayur. I'll hand it back to you to continue the proceedings.